All right, here we are back again uh, in the woods. <laughs> so looking at uh, photo number five, actually picture drawing number five, taming the bull. So uh, today we're kind of coming into that pleasant place in spiritual life. I think the part that all of us are, are really looking forward to getting uh, in our growth. When the mind and, and uh, the self and the, the ego are kind of lining up, they're starting to find a harmony with each other. And how does this happen? You know, this idea of delusion comes around quite a bit and we use it as a word to cover, you know, uh, our falling into desire. And uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot just as a word by itself. It's got components though. Delusion means that you're not seeing things right. And in spiritual life, all of the renunciation, all of the self-control, all of the practice, all of the effort is about undoing this this wrong thinking, this wrong ideation that we have in our mind about what we want and who we are and, and what we are. And the important thing to know about desire is that desire is always hyper-focused and, and partially oriented. Now, what do I mean by that? When you desire something, it's usually focused on a body part, you know, your, your taste buds, uh, you know, the feeling of sleepiness, it's always, it's always focused on only a small part of yourself. And it's, it's usually, uh, you know, highly bounded. You know, it doesn't take into a very wide range uh, of time or perspective. You know, when, you, when, when one would think about going out and getting drunk on a Friday night, when you're when you're looking forward to that as a weekend event you're you're hyper focused one on the sensation of the drunkenness and that period of time only when you're drunk you don't broaden out and have a more holistic picture of yourself and remember the previous saturday morning when you woke up with a headache and were like oh my god i'm never going to do that again you know and you're not focused on on the fact of of that few moments of that intoxication, uh, you know, you paid for with a whole day of sluggishness and, uh, you know, laziness and whatnot. So it's not a holistic approach. It's like, yes, those few moments are great. Yes, that particular sense is fulfilled for that time being. But renunciation and overcoming the delusion is about broadening your perspective and not being hyper-focused on serving just a part of yourself or a part of your mind but it's having a holistic approach to taking care of yourself as a whole, to bring your whole self into the picture so that there's not a part of you that's always in regret or a part of you that's always left in dissatisfaction or a part of you that's left in disappointment, you know? So this is what we're shooting for in spiritual life and this picture is about coming to that place. You've got the bull, the mind, the pure mind, and the ego self walking in the same direction, looking in the same direction. The rope between the two of them uh, is slack, so the tension has released a little bit. You're coming to a point in life where you're realizing uh, what serves you and what doesn't serve you. When you're beginning to understand the nature of the beast and understanding that, that uh, living a right life wasn't about being miserable, wasn't about <laughs> not doing your favorite things, but it was about enabling yourself to, to, to be as you are inside, to where the holistic feeling is one of bliss, one of contentment. That's inspiring. That's, that's beautiful to be a part of. And so the poem for today, for Taming the Bull, the whip and rope are necessary, else he might stray off down some dusty road, being well trained, he becomes naturally gentle. Then unfettered, he obeys his master. The discipline is still necessary a lot of times in spiritual life because you, you, you're always kind of wanting to fall into the easy route uh, or what seems easy. Uh, you know, that's part of the taming of the bull is also coming to realize what is easy and what's not easy. You know, <laughs> the amount of effort that we put into maintaining our delusions, the amount of effort that we put into trying to come up with a constant stream of pleasure for ourselves, uh, the constant effort it takes to keep yourself distracted in life from, from, from the inner self, the inner feeling, from the holistic self. You, you come to realize that the effort and the payment for that uh, is, is significantly higher than being true to yourself, than living a life that's inspiring to yourself as a whole. 
And so this is moving into that period of life, this taming of the bull, bringing pure mind more into focus, bringing ego more into a relaxation, not working from its insecurity and its constant need to reestablish itself as this little I based on a body-mind, ah, this ego. So the attention is there. That's what he's saying. The attention, the intention, the focus, uh, you know, the discipline, those things are still a part of it, but it's no longer a, a real wrestle. <laughs> you're, not, you're not literally trying to bring down a bull at this point. It's moving forward. You've learned to give yourself grace. You've learned to be forgiving of your own self, your own weaknesses and your own shortcomings. And the mind, the voice of the mind has become encouraging. The voice of the mind has become reinforcing. It has it stopped being the accuser, the attacker. Now you're starting to get some self-esteem, some real self-esteem, because some character is beginning to build. You're moving closer to what you've wanted to be, and you're starting to recognize the wisdom of it and to feel the wisdom of it. This is being well-trained. The bull becomes naturally gentle. It's important. As we move forward in spiritual life, that we as people become naturally gentle, kind, you know, considerate, empathetic. So that's the main difference between ego-driven and character-inspired. Egotistically driven is very unkind. It's, it's sitting around making fun of people. It's you know, ragging on people for their weaknesses, or laughing really hard when someone makes their mistake or falls short. Those kinds of things come from ego because the ego is always insecure. We're looking for something beyond that where we see the self in all, we see ourself in each other, and we begin to love, you know, as the greats loved, the people that we've remembered for thousands of years, regardless of what our personal beliefs about them may or may not be, the fact that history has remembered these greats uh, shows just what it is to be a man, a woman, inspired by love and not driven by desire. Love becomes our master, compassion becomes our master, that's picture number five, taming the bull. Here we are, and here we go.